Now, normally, normally, the difference between the Cargo Bob and the Cargo Bob Jet Sam is about $205,000, which the only difference is a slightly cleaner nose and a different paint job. They perform exactly the same. Now, with the sale going on, though, it's like 65% off. And there's some other things going on here, too. Mm -hmm. Um, this is only really a couple runs on, uh, on the lazy mission contact uh, playlist here. So it's worth it to me personally, I think, to get the rarer paint job. Because normally you'd have to be insane to get anything other than the military one. But this one, I think, for for the huge sale that's going on, that's where you're actually saving more money and you get something a little bit different. And I, I kind of like the white paint job. It goes along with the white elephant and the baby white elephant and the, you know, the, all the other cars in the CEO kind of thing. And uh, let's let's get this. Normally two million, it's down to seven hundred thousand. That's really impressive. And I, I didn't have a cargo bob at all, so now I finally do. And of course, now maybe I'll actually be able to develop some cargo bob skills. Who's beeping at me? I have a six. Who's beeping? Who's beeping at me or just beeping at each other? All right, excuse me while I go and make some more money to get myself back up to a million dollars. Oh, look, it's there. And let's see. There, I've more than made up for the difference in price between the two. Yeah, it's probably going to be a little while before I can buy anything involved with the whole gun running uh, DLC, but I've got some time to make the money up, and uh, I have a feeling a cargo bob of some nature might come in handy with gun running. I mean, they're putting it on a 65% discount. That might be a hint that you should really have one, so we'll, we'll see if it becomes useful in the future. All right, now all I need is a little bit of practice. Now, from here on out, I've actually uh, gone offline doing this. I'm no longer flying it and doing the voiceover, simply because it was one of those things where I lost the, the quiet background here at the house. And uh, I decided just to do a little practice flying without doing any particular voiceovers, as it were, at the time. And what you will see is um, that, yeah, my flying is actually worse than even I thought it was. And I'm, I thought it was pretty bad. I, I, I really do feel like I need a lot of practice with this before it's useful. I've seen people do really cool stuff with these things, and I just keep seem to overcorrect constantly. Now, looking at it in the sunset, it does look really cool. I am really happy with the livery. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the, the chopper from uh, from Riptide, which that was a single a single rotor. But it was kind of a cargo lifting kind of helicopter with a, a, a real blunt round front end. And color wise, I think it reminds me of another a single rotor craft, which would be uh, the helicopter from Thomas. What the heck's his name? Thomas the Tank Engine. Is it Harold? Is it Harold the Helicopter? Yeah, it's Harold the Helicopter. So here I am flying Harold with only a double rotor version of Harold, trying to pick up a car. As you can see, this is far more difficult than... Well, it's far more difficult for me than probably just about anybody else. I do not know why. And I've already mostly destroyed the helicopter. If you listen really closely, you can hear the engines failing. And whatever plan I have here, it's not a good one. I'm not exactly sure where this is going. Well, you're going to watch it die in a, few, in a, in a couple of minutes here. And you kind of, oh, here we go. Just smoking and spitting. You'll, you'll see. I get, couldn't even get the car there. Oh, this, here we go. Yeah. Oops, sorry okay, about that. Okay, so I need um, a lot of practice. <laughs> that was a live comment. There we go. 
There you can see the burnt out hull of the uh, the cargo bomb gets him. And there's gonna be a lot more of this. This is this is you know this is me taking a closer look at it, and then we'll we'll try to get ourselves going again pretty soon. I'm pretty sure. Can't get back in it. Can't walk through the door even. That's it's a decorative thing. There's an invisible door there. Yeah, I guess there's a way of crouching and getting in there, but probably not when it's burned up. No, no, that's probably not the case. One of the things I would like to talk about, well we're just we're just gonna watch me fail in practice here for a little while. Is I would like to talk a little bit about the future of Oh, this was funny because what I did was I just wanted to get a car to go back and I accidentally grabbed one that Simeon wanted. And jocularity ensues. Which he yeah, has a good symbolic time to start talking about the joys of the public sessions. In my last three public sessions, where I was actually in a true public session with people, uh, the first one is was in our last video. That was the one where hackers attacked me and tried to they leveled me up a full level, I believe, uh, trying to get me banned. And that ended up with a uh, a service ticket from Rockstar where I told them what's going on and I pretty much at least uh, isolated myself from having to worry about oh whether I was going to get banned or not. In the next uh, the next time I went out, I tried to do a, a special cargo deal because it is special cargo week or whatever. You get 25. I forget whether you get 25% more money or it's 25% off buying the crates. 25% off something going on there. Because well, let's let's this is a rare opportunity. Let's see if we can we can do something with this. Sure enough, I got the crate, got back to the warehouse, sold it. Drove to where the, it was on the tugboat, took the tugboat out, and got wasted by a guy in a in a hydra. I just kind of flowed down, blasted the crap out of me for no, nothing you can really do there. Um, I didn't even know he was. He wasn't even really on the radar. I don't think he just kind of just appeared and boom. And that was the end of that. So then I, I went for. I got. They didn't have this recorded, but I. Uh, I, they, they dump you on a jet ski when you're blown up in the middle of the water. And so I went from being blown up in the middle of the water, and I jet skied out to somebody's yacht, and then the guy tried to attack me on the yacht, but because he was trying to get me on the yacht, he crashed his hydra right into the water, so that was at least a little satisfying. And I think the same guy then came back again with uh, some kind of personal jet that wasn't armed, and then tried to crash it into the yacht and kill me, but I survived, and the yacht was fine. I think he took out one of the helicopters on the upper deck. But the upper deck the helicopter respawned. I flew back, tried to do a couple other things. It just, things didn't go well from there on out. Now then, my last, uh, my last attempt at a true public session, um, same kind of deal. Got the, uh, thing, got it too. This time it was, you had to take it in the airplane. And took off with the airplane and got shot down by a guy in a Hydra. So, uh, we can see at least the things are, uh, consistent here. I actually did record that episode, but for various reasons, um, I'm not uploading that one. There were a lot of people talking in the, uh, in the lobby. One guy was playing piano. Somebody else was playing the racist version of DuckTales into the mic. I mean, it was a very strange kind of episode, and I, I have a feeling that if I do post it, I'll, I'll be demonetized. Even if I edit out the racist version of DuckTales, it's, uh, I don't know if it'll be compelling with the way things went. I mean, nothing was very, nothing interesting was happening to me except getting just blown up. And I pretty much, at this point, feel like you can't really use a public session with actual people. You have to get yourself an empty public session, which you can do still. If, if Rockstar ever patches this, we're in such trouble. But if you, um, and I have a video about this someplace, but if you make yourself a playlist, and the only thing you put in the playlist is the race called At The Races. Okay, then you run the playlist. You run the playlist. Not the playlist, but the playlist. And let me just hold on for one second here. Okay, so if you run that playlist, just do one lap around the track, which is actually two laps for some reason, however they set that up finish it, then restart the playlist, 
But then when you get to the point where you have to select all the options for, oh, here's here's a little quick tip for you. Don't try to extend your uh, your hook right after you take off or it relands you. It's the same button. Um, if you uh, exit that playlist, like you just just quit out, it will put you in an empty public session. Now it won't be empty forever, but it'll be empty for sometimes a good amount of time, and then you can actually get some things done. That's the only way I can see getting any kind of CEO stuff or even biker stuff, and especially gun running stuff. Once gun running comes out, oh my goodness, I have no idea what, what's going to happen with gun running. I mean, they're just putting a lot of very heavily armed vehicles. If they put just the the three, the two armored vehicles, the armored Tampa and the, uh, the APC in, where you have the options of cannons and missiles on these things. I mean, what's what's a, a public session going to look like once people get a hold of these things? It's going to, you know, here I am in my helicopter, boom! Hey, I'm taking off with my crates, boom! I don't know what they're going to do with the uh, the gun running, but it's probably going to be like CEO with guns. We can guess it's going to be like a CEO missions with guns or biker missions that have more things to shoot. And it's just going to turn into a complete madhouse. It's already a madhouse, but it's going to be even a bigger madhouse. Which, you know, more colorful options, basically. So that little trick, as long as that does it, that remains unpatched, that'll be at least one way to make money in this game. Now, I'm not saying that going out into a completely crazed free mode kind of thing, trying to do missions while half the world is shooting at you, is it fun on some level if you have a lot of money and you don't need to make anything? Then you're really set. If you really kind of need the bucks and you need it to work, terribly frustrating. There's no question about it. Um, and that's just where you're at there. So this, things could get terribly interesting going forward um, with gun running. We'll have to see how, what happens when all that releases. I don't see them improving the balance of the game with this. You know, I mean, all right, yeah, you can, maybe they have put an ATC out there that's a Hydra killer, and then you have somebody, have that run alongside of you if you have enough, uh, enough crew members to man it. Maybe you could you could say that this will be a balancing thing. You can already do that with a Runer 2000 if you've got, you know, or even, you know, any of the, uh, the turreted vehicles can, can help you out against stuff like hydrants and helicopters and you know, buzzards and all kinds of things, annihilators. But how will it really play out? It's going to be hard to say. I, I'm going to say this. Trying to do CEO stuff solo, quite difficult. If you don't have a crew on you, can I book a car? If you don't have a serious crew going, you know, the CEO stuff, you, you need those three people, those two other people with you to just protect them. Matter of fact, the mission, you know, I tried one mission in an empty session where I was doing CEO, you know, special cargo stuff. I'm flying with the airplane, and then I was attacked by helicopters. Well, the airplane doesn't have any offensive capability. I, I don't think you can shoot out the windows. So you're basically dead in the water unless you've got a guy with a buzzard or with some kind of vehicle following you with guns on it. You know, someone can drive along even if it comes up with a homing launcher and blasts it out of the sky. You're, you're done. There's nothing you can do here. You're, it's about as effective as me trying to pick up this car. Oh, look, I finally picked up the car. The person fell out, so we don't have to worry. I think my goal here was just to put it on a building. Just to take it somewhere and put it down safely. And I, I didn't have a real plan for what I was going to do with it. But I just wanted to have the ability to do that. To pick something up and put it down safely. And you can guess how well this worked out. Let's see, I put it on top of my apartment. That might have been the goal. Whee, just swinging free in the breeze. I, I think it could just break off if you, if you bang it around too much. I got it pretty low. Get a release here. So, complete fail on that point. Alright, let's, you know, let's lather repeat. Try and get us something else here. Overall, I gotta say, I'm really happy with delivery. I'm happy I got this particular aircraft. I don't know that I'll ever have a proper use for it. Oh, goodness, I just completely sheared off one of the rotors. Took the ro back rotor completely off, and guess what? You can't do anything with just the front rotor. It just kicks you out, and they, they come to get it. My Jetson Cargo Bob 893 over here. 
I mean, can I get back in? Can I? No. I guess this kind of qualifies as a CEO in pajamas episode, although it's. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing here. I gotta go back and get another Hi, helicopter at some point. You. Everybody's taking a look at it here, stuck in the street, causing a traffic jam. They're supposed to come and get it. It took forever to get there. A baller. Did I forget, did I, did I steal the baller? That's what I did. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to get money out of it. Steal the baller. We're, we're right up the street from the, the spray and paint river shop, kind of the Los Santos Customs. Auto repairs and stuff. Screech. And all right, we did that. We then we went back to the office. We got another cargo bob. Now there's one episode here that actually becomes somewhat funny. I'm not sure if this might be the one where I, I end up. Yeah, this is where I started to head north. But you know, maybe just playing with a cargo bob in the city isn't where I should start. That might take too much skill. And so we headed north, tried to find some open areas. Something that might be worthwhile here. It's a very pretty view. Now, if that is one thing that kind of you forget about GTA, it's that it really is a beautiful game. And here we are just coming over the, the foggy valleys of Los Santos. Just looking for a car to pick up and put back down again. I mean, you know, it, I didn't have a real lofty set of goals here on this, on this whole thing. I was just trying to see what I could do to make the Cargo Bob a worthwhile purchase. The good news is it's just one more toy in the toy box, so I'm, I'm happy to have it, even if I'm not any good with it. You know, maybe you possess go to fly this thing. I don't have to ask him what's going on. Flying around the mountains aimlessly, looking for a place to go here. Alright, here I just decided to try and land. But see, can I even land it? I remember this now. Because there was a unique opportunity here in that there was a Cargo Bob military version on on the landing uh, strip here. On the landing pad here at uh, Trevor's airfield. So you can, you can compare the two liveries. It's kind of neat. There's the Jetsam that I bought. Is it Jetsam or Jetsam? I don't know. Depends. Tomato, tomato. NL S69. There you go. And now here you have the Marine version. The Marine version has some extra stuff on the nose, which you can imagine is extra cool electronics equipment kind of things. Otherwise, they're absolutely identical, save for the paint. See, the, the one nice thing is that if you ever really, really, really want to fly a Marines version, you can pick those up. This, this is the more rare one. I'm kind of glad I got the more rare one. Kind of a funky little bird face there up on the red. That's kind of neat. You can see where it looks like Harold from the front here. Put a happy face on that, you know. I can get the mail for you. That's what... Friends are four, huh? Taking a look at everything here. Take off again. Nice little overhead switch animation. I like that. Now from here where I headed was trying to find some kind of vehicle to pick up. That was the next... Again, now we're just still trying to pick up a vehicle. That's the whole point of this helicopter. Is to pick things up and put them down. Desperately flying around, crashing into things. I think I tried to pick up that trailer, and that doesn't work well, in case you're wondering. If that's a decoration, it's not really. Yeah, watch this, though. Now, I think that was actually not a bad attempt, but it doesn't do anything. So much fail. Now, this kind of worked, but didn't. And, you know, you're going to see... 
a desperate attempt to get a semi. Interesting thing, the semis appear to be about... Almost, yeah, uh, he's on top of them. Now he's aggregated. He knows something's up. Come on, how close do we have to get? Really close. Chase this guy. Now, if you look to the left there, you can see a couple of white Washington parked out by the dishes. With scientist types around. We're going we're to investigate that one. That's going to be part of the whole thing. Come on. Get down there and get that truck. That's what I was trying to do. And we hooked it. Except it's about as heavy as an insurgent. Oh, we really bounced him off of one of those indestructible signs. So you can't, you can't get any kind of altitude when you're hooked to a truck. So that was one lesson. So then I came around here. And I saw these two white Washingtons and I'm like, well, geez, this might be a random alien event kind of thing going on. And you can see the, the dishes are all pulsing blue. It's a little bit subtle. Which, the you know, radio dishes don't generally do that in real life. You know, RF is all invisible. So I try to see, were they saying anything? Don't mind me, I'm just the CEO in pajamas. And they're just staring and... taking notes and... playing on their phones. Being completely silent. Silent. Silent? Silent scientist. That's what we got going on here. And I can tell you right now, that doesn't happen. If you're just standing outside silently, um, it's awkward. That's, you know... Even if you're a scientist or an engineer, I mean, it's... You'd be talking about something, you know. Unless there's something of very great gravity going on here. What did you find? What unspeakable thing have you discovered here? I have to say the dishes look beautiful. That's just a great shot. And pretty soon I think I realized they're not going to do anything interesting. And we just move along. Because they don't. This is all it. This is it. This is the whole deal here. The three amigos. Representing science. I thought about gra just grabbing one of the cars, which is probably what I should have done. Then I'd have myself a scientist, white Washington, which is probably just like a regular Washington. I even think double check and see, is it like different than a normal Washington? Does it look the same? Punched it up in the, the phone. Like, is this worth getting? Because the Washington under the hood is the same thing as the Stanger, I believe. They already have a Stanger. Walking around. Oh, I think there's a couple other guys. Someplace, just worker, kind of. In the normally, the normal work clothes you'd kind of see. Can I go over by them? Literally, I'm thinking there's got to be something interesting here. What am I missing? Yeah, this is where I said, is it different than another a regular, uh, a regular Washington? And the only difference I can tell is that it's white, and you can just get a Washington and paint it white. No real big deal there. You can scroll down, scroll down. It's a little further down the sedans, the four doors. Keep going, keep going. One more, another one. There you go. And just looking at the Albany Washington there, you can see that it's the same car. Nothing fancy. Not even the hubcaps are different for the scientists. And then I decided to hatch a plan. How can I do something that's even halfway interesting here? And the only thing I could think to do was try and get one of those Washingtons on the hook. Pick it up, put it down someplace, and then I would have earned the right to keep it. And I'd say, alright, there's a couple guys over here. The plan has already been hatched by this point, but these guys are doing the same thing. Well, one guy's smoking. 
And the other guy is still, you know, taking notes. Alright, no one's gonna say anything like, Wow, I can't believe they found aliens. Something like that. No, nothing that's happening. So we get back in the cargo, Bob. Harold. I don't know if I can call this Harold without, you know, somehow that being some kind of copyright. Thing. It is a cargo, Bob. A cargo, Bob named Harold. Does any of that make any kind of sense? No, no. We'll, we'll come up with something different. Some variation on the, the white elephant theme. Dumbo! There you go. Or maybe Dumbo would be better. Dumbo! There we go. Dumbo the flying. See that? That, that if, if you've got your if your if your satellite dish is making those blue lights like that, you've got an arcing problem. That's not that's not radio frequency coming in from the stars. So it's, it's, you got visible, then you got problems. Dumbo the well, Dumbo the Disney flying elephant would probably be a copyright infringement too. So it would make more sense. If you're going to infringe copyrights, then, well, hey. Yeah, I still suck at flying. That's... You're just going to have to join your... You're just going to entertain yourself completely here as we uh, try to hook up. Look at that. Missed it by six inches. Seriously, you know, Rockstar, you couldn't cut us some slack on the, the hookup distance here. It has to be... You can't... You can't land on it without just crushing the thing. I think I accidentally got out. That wasn't part of the plan. I mean, that was an accidentally get out of the helicopter, then get back up in the helicopter and try again. Oh, don't worry. I finally do get one. And then things take a turn down the road. I'm trying to use almost no inputs whatsoever because it's so oversensitive. Just tapping the keyboard the slightest amount. You gotta give it some input. It, it, everything's too much. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just so hard to get within that six inch space. I, I'd love to know what the trick to flying these is. Is it an analog, you know, a stick, you know? Should I steal the controller off my son's Xbox 360 and then go with that? I don't know. Chop, 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 chop. Oh yeah, let's go and screw up the, the rotors a little bit. Now we're not even close. I'm actually wondering how the heck I actually did get one. Still blue lights on the... Uh... Look at that. I mean, how close do you have to get? This is ridiculous. Finally! Finally! I hook one up, I bounce it off the 17 things, and now I just want to take it a distance of some nature. And if I could land this, I was going to allow myself to keep it. At the very minimum, I did, if you want to scare the ever-living heck out of the scientists, who are now going away. The desert! No, I can just put it down the desert, but that's just too easy. We don't, we want to, we want to feel like we've had some kind of accomplishment. Where can I put it down? Where would be a good place to put this baby down? That's what I'm thinking. Heading back into the city, I'm not going to be able to get it back to my home base. I know that. Not getting it back to the offices. I thought, aha! Here! Now this is the track that you, you actually race on when you do at the races. This is where it happens. Well, this will be as good a place as any. Of course, as I'm bringing it down. Just about ready. Just low enough. I don't want to break it. I release it. And then the thing explodes. You can, but then, alright, well fine. I'll just drive back in my car. Which is gone. When I respawned, it got rid of the car that I stole. I'm, you know, and this is just absolute frustration. You go through all that, and then what? You, okay, so because I crashed the plane, I'd released it already. Where did it go? I'm thinking, well, I'll steal a car and get somewhere else. But then I came up with another plan. 
an entirely better plan that is just far more fitting for what's gone on with this cargo, Bob. Have you guessed yet? Have you guessed yet? That's right, it's stupid, no good, very frustrating, duh. And that's on that note, folks, as I beat the crap out of this burnt out cargo bob. This is the Black Knight, CEO in pajamas. Have a great night. Okay, so I guess I guess we just have a cow on the roof now. That's like a thing. Stupid! Why won't you pick up a car? It takes twenty minutes just to pick. Up. <laughs>